Why Prelim missile matters so much as a conventional weapon in warfare? How come a quasi-ballistic missile is going to be a game changer for India? What exactly is a salvo launch and why it is specially related to Prelim missile testing? India has quietly crossed a critical threshold in conventional missile warfare with the launch of Prelim missile which not only shows technological maturity but also a new doctrine of speed accuracy and precision hello everyone welcome to vajram and ravi's flash news my name is shubhangi singh and today we are going to talk about the successful testing that has been done of prelim missile how it sits within the arsenal of indian missiles and what is the strategic importance of this particular missile in our arsenal so starting with understanding that what has been done in the test so recently our prelim missile which is basically a quasi ballistic missile was launched and this launch was also special because this launch was a salvo launch so two prelim missiles were launched and the testing was done which is done just before induction which is known as user evaluation trials now this test was conducted in chandipur where we have the integrated test range and this clearly marks that the salvo launch is successful and it also confirms that there is a proper operational reliability of the prelim missiles if we are talking about combat like conditions now before we move to understand more be it the salvo launch the quasi ballistic trajectory let us also look into what exactly what exactly are prelay missiles so when we talk about the word prelay it is a sanskrit word which is used for destruction or apocalypse so when we are talking about prelay as a missile this is the one which can create destruction and another important pointer here is that this is a first one which has been indigenously built and this is part of the conventional warfare missiles which are used now when we are talking about missiles they can be surface to air missiles but prelay is a surface to surface missile and it was developed under the prelay project itself which was sanctioned back in 2015 this missile has been developed by drdo and this testing of user evaluation trial and its success marks its way for induction in our arsenal as well so when we talk about prelay missile this has been specially designed to ensure high precision in conventional warfare and this is not related to nuclear delivery so when we are talking about the usual warfare that we seen especially keeping aside the nuclear arsenal the surface to surface missiles which can create impact in our enemies land we have prelay missile for the same and this is where it is going to fulfill the objective of being rapid of being precise and most importantly if it is to be intercepted then it becomes useless so this is also a hard to intercept missile which can ensure a proper battlefield strike wherever it is required now that we have a fair idea about the missile itself more details i'll bring up uh, Now that we have a fair idea about prelay missile now let us talk about the salvo launch which is also a unique point in this whole testing so when we are talking about salvo launch it means basically that there have been multiple missile firings and it has been done rapidly from the very same launcher the launcher has not been changed this shows that the missiles can be launched robustly it also shows that there is a proper command and control efficiency which can be used and which is of great importance in battlefield war like situations and it also demonstrates that that there will be proper reload and fire sequence and there is reliability to it so the multiple firing not only ensures that there will be proper launch there is efficiency there is also reload and fire sequence and in this particular test we have seen that both of the missiles which were launched they followed the given quasi ballistic trajectory that was set and they all met the predefined flight objectives so they not only fulfilled their trajectory they also fulfilled their predefined flight objectives 
and they also ensured the performance that was required in the end phase that is terminal phase. So if we understand the military meaning right here, that means it shows that there is absolute readiness in terms of saturation strikes that if they are required, prelay missiles are there to perform. Now that we have a clear understanding on salvo launch also, let us move ahead and get more details in terms of what are the technical aspects associated with prelay missile. Now prelay missile is of the range from 150 to 500 kilometers. It can be used in this range, which gives us a very important coverage in terms of two fronts that we are talking about, which are highly sensitive. Other than that, this missile is also known for the payload it can carry that is between 350 to 1000 kgs and the propulsion, the engine motor that is used here is a solid fuel rocket motor. Now on this missile, the payload that we want to put or the warhead, it can be a penetration come blast forehead, it can be a pre-fragmented warhead and it can also be where we have multiple variants in terms of submunition. So this missile can be used for these particular warheads and when we talk about efficiency, the launch readiness here is of less than 10 minutes if it is present on a mobile canister and 60 seconds are only required once the command is in place. So 60 seconds we get for command to launch. Now that we have a fair clarity on the technical specification, another technical specification where we talk about a quasi-ballistic trajectory or a quasi-ballistic missile which will follow this trajectory. This is where we need to understand that how we are labeling it as a quasi-ballistic one. So when we are talking about quasi-ballistic missile, first let us understand the trajectories, how they differ. So when we are talking about the trajectories, we usually get to see Cruise missiles are the ones which are guided through power across and they move only in atmosphere. But when we are talking about ballistic missiles, you have to understand that they are not powered throughout their trajectory. They are the ones just in case if you hurl something in the sky, the usual trajectory it will take, that is the ballistic trajectory we have. So when we are talking about ballistic trajectory, it is a curved path which any unpowered object will take across the space once it is hurled and this trajectory comes not just from initial velocity but there is influence of gravitation, air drag as well. So when we are talking about ballistic trajectory, we get to see that this is a curved path that we are talking about, correct? This is the curved path that we are talking about. But when we are talking about a quasi-ballistic strategy, when we are talking about a quasi-ballistic trajectory, in this scenario, it does not follow the regular predictable parabolic path. In this situation, it goes to a flattened trajectory, it stays within the atmosphere and it can also change, perform mid-course maneuvers and terminal maneuvers as well. For example, this will move for the initial phase in the ballistic way but in mid-way if there are any changes required that can be done, be it in the mid-way, be it in the terminal phase as well. So when it stays only in atmosphere, that means it will stay within the atmosphere, what will happen because of that, it will be difficult to detect, it will reduce any radar horizon which can be found and the interception because there is a lot of maneuvering that can be done, the interception also becomes very difficult. And that is why air defense systems which would be in place to destroy such missiles, they will find it extremely difficult to understand what is the maneuver, what is the trajectory, what is the path and intercept it accordingly. Now because of all this, the salvo launch, the quasi-ballistic trajectory that this missile is following and also the specifications I talked about, this gives a strategic advantage, especially when we are talking about our all time hostile neighbor as well. We will be getting into that. Now before that, let us move to understand India's whole arsenal that is front front of us. So India's missile arsenal, especially the ballistic ones, 
is quite varied, but Pralay came, uh, comes as a game changer, reason being it is going to fill a very important gap. So if you talk about Prithvi missiles which have the range up to 350 km and if you talk about Pinaka missiles which are around 90 km, the gap in here from 150 to 350 can be addressed by Pralay missiles. This can help in the battlefield strike, the conventional strike it is required. It can be helpful in battlefield dominance. And if we have a situation of escalation, Pralaya missiles can actually serve the purpose of exhalation control as well. And that is why it gives us a significant advantage, especially with our neighbors. First, the all-time hostile one, because it covers Pakistan's critical air bases, command centers, and the troop concentration that Pakistan has, especially in their Punjab and Sindh region. And it seems like a befitting and appropriate response for their own Nasser missiles that they have. Now, if you talk about Nasser missile, they are nuclear capable, but Pralay missiles, we have to consider they are the high precision ones. For nuclear capability, we do have other set of missiles. Can you tell me which missiles in India's arsenal can be used for delivering nuclear warhead in the comment section? And because of Pralay, the escalation dominance, because we can ensure precision without any crossing of nuclear threshold, that puts us in an advantageous situation. And not just with this neighbor, with our other neighbor as well, that is China. Because if there is any situation at all, especially across our border regions, be it in the logistic hubs that PLA is developing very close to our borders, all these are the ones which can be easily covered with high precision. And that is what helps in Pralay being seamlessly associated and integrated with integrated battle groups because it supports India's IBGs and also it is absolutely suitable for mobile deployment which is very important for the difficult terrains such as mountains. And that is why Pralay marks the doctrinal shift where we are not just talking about precision, we are talking about speed also where there is a swift retaliation and this can be done under limited war scenarios also because we are not crossing the nuclear threshold in this particular context. Now on this note, once we have understood how Pralay missile is not only filling a very important gap in India's arsenal, also play, placing us very strategically when we are talking about the China and Pakistan factor, but it also puts us in the global map because it is very closely comparable to Russia's Iskander M, which we have been using for a while. When we talk about Pralay, many are there to comment that the lethality, the precision of Pralay comes from Iskander M because there are multiple simil similarities such as the quasi-ballistic flight that we have talked about, the 10 meter CEP that is present and also the terminal maneuvering that we get to see in Iskander M. But the important factor in terms of Pralay missile is that is it is indigenously developed. We are not at all dependent on a third party to ensure our security. And that is yet another strategic advantage that Pralay missile gives us. Now in this very context, it also places us very well in terms of export potential. Because India's defense export have recently seen a huge boom and already there are multiple interests for Pralay missiles export from Armenia, from Philippines. There has been no confirmation yet, but once it will be inducted, it will not only strengthen India's conventional deterrence, it will support the indigenous manufacturing, the indigenous missile ecosystem, and it will reduce reliance on foreign systems and also be an important factor to our exports. Now on this note, I'll be concluding that when we are talking about the successful testing of Pralay missile, they not only bring high precision conventional strike option, they have multiple benefits along with it, which we have discussed, because this is the game changer which transforms India's tactical missile warfare from just being deterrence heavy to dominance driven. Now that was all from my side. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much.